Hey, today I'm going to show you guys how to create this really cool animated neon sign effect inside of Procreate on the iPad. It's really easy to do. I'm going to show you step by step how I create them. So just follow along and you'll be able to make your own. So to get started, we are going to hop inside Procreate and I'm going to create a new canvas. I'm going to go ahead and make my canvas 1080 by 1920 because I'm going to post this to my Instagram story and then later I can also crop it down to be the size perfect for an Instagram post. Once I have my canvas created, I'm going to go ahead and hop over to this app called Unsplash. Um, it's a really great app. They have a ton of high quality photos, backgrounds, wallpapers, all sorts of stuff and you can search through their wide library of images. So I'm gonna look for something like a dark wall. Typically, dark images look the best for this neon light effect because it really helps the neon glow of the sign pop out. So I'm just gonna look for an image of a wall, maybe something like this. This looks really good, it has the, the wall, um, it's a darker image and then has like a fl the floor and some textures, so I think this will work great. I'm just going to click this arrow in the bottom right hand corner and it's going to send it straight to my photo album. Then we're going to go back into Procreate, press the wrench icon, we're going to insert a photo and then drop in the photo that I just downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and resize this image to cover the entire canvas and just Center it up a bit, something like that, and we're good to go. So the next part is probably the hardest part of this entire thing. It's figuring out what you want your neon sign to say. Um, I typically like to do some sort of like positive or thought provoking message, but you can literally make your neon sign say anything. So we're gonna start creating our neon sign um, we're gonna go over to the wrench icon and we're gonna insert some text this is gonna be the first layer for our neon sign so when creating the um, type for the neon sign there are a couple things that you need to think about one of those being you want to use a typeface that's either a monoline typeface meaning um, something like this so when you type it just creates like a single stroke or you could use a typeface and what I preferably use a typeface that's an outline typeface. Um, it's best to find a typeface that's already outlined. That way you can go in and click the outline button here to make the stroke thicker in Procreate. And I'll show you why that's important later. But to be honest, you can use um, any typeface and just outline it. It just looks better if the typeface is already an outline typeface. So uh, I'm gonna use this made outer typeface. I think it's uh, a typeface I purchased a while back. And I'm gonna create my text. So I'm gonna do something like you are, and it doesn't matter if it's all capitalized or lowercase, whatever you want, you can get crazy. You can do all uh, symbols, you know, it doesn't really matter. You are really great. Cool. And then I'm just going to go in, I'm going to double click on my type and I'm just going to adjust a little, reduce the leading, space out the kerning just a little. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color of the layer to a darker color. Not black, but maybe like a really dark gray. Yeah, that's looking good. So once I have that, I'm just gonna pretty much center it up, get it adjusted where I think looks good, somewhere in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna duplicate this layer, and then I'm gonna go down to the bottom layer. I'm gonna edit this text, and now I'm gonna turn on that outline layer. It's basically just gonna make the type thicker now. So once we have that, we have the type thicker, we're gonna go back to the layer above. We're gonna edit this text and we're actually gonna change the color of this text to a slightly lighter color. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna add a slight highlight 
to the text to make it look like it's got that like beveled neon tube look. And that's pretty much the basis of our, um, our off neon light layer. What we could do though is take it a step further, duplicate this bottom layer again, go down to the bottom layer, and then I like to add like a slight Gaussian blur to this layer. It just adds, I think, a little more shape to the layer. Um, and then if you want to, you can go ahead and group these layers and then just name this layer off. Cause that's basically the, the off state of our neon light. So what we wanna do now is go back into this layer. Why is it not letting me open it? Oh, there we go. Go into the layer and let's just duplicate this guy and we're gonna drag it out of the layer. So this is essentially going to become our on layer now. So what we're gonna do is highlight the text again and we can start to change this to a color. I'm gonna make it a pure white. I'm gonna select the text again, and I want to be sure to um, check the outline again to make it the thinner layer. We're gonna duplicate this layer, edit the text, and then we can turn the outline back on for this layer to make it slightly thicker. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a color to this layer. I'm gonna do some sort of yellow like a yellow orange I think would be nice. Somewhere in there. Now what we wanna do is take this top layer, let's duplicate it again. You wanna be sure that anytime you go to change a text layer, so in just a second we're gonna add a Gaussian blur to this layer, just be sure to duplicate it because once you add the Gaussian blur, you actually rasterize that layer and you can't go back and make any changes to the text. So let's click on the second layer. We're just gonna add a slight Gaussian blur to it, maybe like a seven. And as you can see, we're starting to get that glow look, which is really nice. We're gonna go to this top layer, we're gonna duplicate again, and I'm just gonna turn off the one above it for now just so we can see how this is affecting it. We're gonna add another slight glow, maybe like three to 4%. And now we're really starting to get that glow. Now if we wanted to, we could duplicate this bottom layer and actually move it to the top so that we get that 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 white highlight at the very top. Um, sometimes I'll take that layer and I may just do like a slight Gaussian blur to that, maybe like a one or two. And now we're really getting that nice glow. So that's pretty much it for the the actual neon light look. You can group these layers and we can name this to on. So now we have our on and our off. Oh, let's delete this bottom highlight layer. Actually, let me undo that and I can go ahead and drop that into our on layer. There we go. So now we have our off and we have our on. So you can kind of see how it looks when the light's off and then we have the light, the neon light on. Now to take this a step further, what I also like to do is create another layer sometimes, and it kind of depends on what's in your image. You can create like a glow on the floor or a glow on the wall to kind of add to the effect of the neon light. So what I'll do is I'll usually just grab, it doesn't really matter, let me see. Let me just grab a brush. I'm gonna grab this brush. I'm gonna grab that color I just used and making sure that I'm on the new layer I just created. I'll just, you know, draw a circle. Oh, that was a horrible circle, I'm sorry. I'm gonna draw a circle. And then I'll fill the color in. And then what I can do is go to this layer, do the Gaussian blur and just kind of blur that color. You can blur it a lot, blur it a little. I'm gonna do maybe like a 70, do like a 75% blur. Then I'll go to my layer and I might just adjust the, um, the light overlays. Usually soft light looks pretty good. Um, hard light can work sometimes if you, turn, if you turn the layer down a little bit. I'm gonna do a soft light and put it at maybe like 75%. 
Then I'm gonna take that like glow and we can drop it in the on layer. That way, when you turn the light off and on, you also get that like slight glow around the neon light that looks really nice. Now we can do that same thing um, and create another layer. I just created a layer inside my on layer, which is fine. And I'm gonna add like a slight glow on the floor. So same thing, we're just gonna drop this color here, go over to our Gaussian blur, and then do something, um, I want it to have a little more shape, so maybe something like 50, and then we'll go and change this to soft light as well. So it's not much, but you'll see whenever you turn it on and off, you can kind of see how it changes the lighting of the, of the actual image. So there we go. Kind of got the effect going so far. So now what I like to do is go over to our background layer. Then I'll click the plus icon because I want to add another layer. I'm going to go to my brushes. And if you go to inking, there's a brush called, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Fine tip. Wait, no, that's not the brush. Calligraphy, I'm sorry. Your mono line brush in the calligraphy, in the uh, calligraphy folder. Everybody should have this on their iPad. Um, I think it's one of the like brushes that comes with Procreate, but it's the mono line brush. And I like this brush a lot because it's a nice, evenly, evenly stroked um, brush. So then what I like to do is I grab a color that's almost black, but not completely black. And what I'm gonna do now is make sure my mono line brush, the stabilization is all the way up because that's gonna smooth my line. And what I like to do is go into each letter and just create sort of like the wiring for the letter. Wiring that would, I guess, be there if this was a real neon light. So what I like to do is just connect each letter and I'll do it to make sure the whole neon sign is connected. It just kind of like really sells the idea that this is like an actual functioning neon light that has power being run to it. And these wires that I'm running are just kind of random. I like to make them look like they're hanging down. Um, I'll even, I'll change the direction here and maybe connect it to the U, something like that. And it just helps really sell that idea that this is, you know, a connected lighting system. I think this um, color might be, I might make it a little, well, it's fine, it's fine. Because whenever I turn that light off, it's it gets dark, it's just that over that overlaid light that's giving it that effect, which is fine, it looks good. So then what I'll also do is just kind of drop the line down and then try and make it look as though a cable is being run off the floor. And that, that light on the floor is perfect because it kind of highlights that wire. So that's pretty much it. We have our, and we can go ahead and rename this. That way we don't lose it. So like cord or like power cord, <laughs> power cord. And then we can name this one background BG. There we go. So we have our on. And then if we turn that on layer off, the lights off and it just flickers like that. So at this point, you're pretty much done creating the neon light and you could save this image out and you know share it as just an image. But if you wanna take it a step further, what we could do is actually animate this neon light effect. All right, so now we're gonna take the neon light text we just made and I'm gonna show you how you can animate this to flicker on and off inside Procreate. Now what you want to do is go over to the wrench icon, you're going to turn on your animation assist, and when you do this you might notice that everything you just created disappeared. But don't worry, what we're going to do is go over to our layers, we're actually going to take our power cord and background layer and we're going to group those, that way they exist on the same layer. Then what we're going to do is select our background, 
and or select the background image down here at the bottom and we're gonna set it as our background that way that's gonna stay consistent throughout our entire animation so now we have our off and we have our on now what you might notice and what I'm seeing is the glow that we created around our text has gotten really bright I'm not sure why this happens but we're gonna need to go into our layer and just kind of adjust the opacity until it gets to a place that we're happy with. So somewhere there, and then I'm gonna adjust this one. Maybe like 50%. There we go. So we have our off and we have our on. All right, so now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to change a few settings inside of our animation assist. The first one being this loop and ping pong setting. I like to put it on ping pong because it's basically gonna play to the end of our animation and then replay backwards. So it's gonna kind of ping pong back and forth. So I like to turn that on and then for my frames per second, I like to either have it set to 24 or like 12 to, or eight to 12. So for this one, I'm actually gonna put it maybe at like, actually let's go ahead and just do 24. So this one's gonna play kind of fast, but I think it looks the most natural and most fluid. So then we're going to take our off layer down here at the bottom and we're just gonna increase the duration maybe for, for five frames. Then we're gonna go ahead and duplicate that layer and drag it to after our on animation. So now if we play this back, you'll see it, it flickers on really fast. So we wanna kinda adjust that a bit. So now we're gonna take the on layer, we're gonna duplicate that, and we're gonna add it after that off layer maybe increase the duration of the off layer for four frames. And this is kind of where you're gonna need to experiment and figure out what looks best for like duration and timing for your animation. Um, I kind of do it random each time, like a neon light flicker isn't always uniform. So let's duplicate that off layer again, drag it after the on, and then maybe this one only flickers on for like two frame or like one frame and then we duplicate the on layer and now the on layer holds for like 24 frames if I can get it at 24 if I can get it to 24 there we go all right so now when we watch this back it holds and then flickers off holds and then flicks off now what I like to do sometimes too, since I'm posting this to um, social media, is sometimes I'll even hold the off frame for longer so people can see that this is a neon light that's turned off and then all of a sudden it like flickers on. So I think that's a really nice effect. So we'll have it off, it turns on, turns off. Off, on. Yeah, and there we go. We kind of have the animation. It's as easy as that. And you can mess with the timing of this however much you want, you know, increase the duration that it's on and increase the duration that it's off, have it flicker on and off constantly, however you want to do it. You're really just manipulating the on and off layer. And then your background and your chord layer just kind of always stay the same. So once it's in a place that you like, you can go over to gallery, that way to kind of like save what you've done. Then you can click on your wrench icon after you've jumped back into your project. You can go to share, and then I like to export as an animated MP4. This is just gonna save it as like a video file, essentially. Um, I leave it at like 24 frames per second, and even here you can adjust the timing and see if there's a timing that you like better. Um, just kind of play with it, but I think 24, 24 frames per second is a nice sweet spot. So then I'll export it and it'll pretty much just save straight to my photo album. And then from there, I can either share it to my computer, I can send it straight to my phone. Like here, I'll send it to, I'll send it to my iPhone. Let's see, send to Weston's iPhone. And then there we go. We have our animation playing on my phone. Here, I'll play it again. There we go, and you can just share that straight to Instagram. Now, if you want, 
because we set this up in the format that's best to post to an Instagram story. You can also, what I like to do sometimes is I'll duplicate the project and then I'll go in and I'll resize this canvas, crop and resize. And I'll scale this down, um, usually like, usually the height um, to like 1350 by 1080. So like right there and then save that one. And this is a crop down version, but this is the best um, size for Instagram. I messed up the cropping a little bit, but you get the point. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's really easy to do. Um, you can have fun making a ton of different ones. I have a whole folder of some different ones that I've made, some that I've really enjoyed doing. Your backgrounds can really be anything that you want. Um, this one is like a lighter background, but still works light turns off um, you can even do um, even just like plain plain bright walls so just get creative with it have fun thank you so much for watching this video if there's anything else you would like to learn any other animation or graphic design tutorials be sure to leave them down in the comments below if you create a neon sign effect and you share it to instagram please share it with me i would love to see what you create and uh, thank you so much for being here. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.